which diet do we talk about that mess up the gut? You know the normal three, the three inflammatory foods. And now, your woke doctor will tell you, ah, don't worry, as long as you're taking them in moderation, as long as you're taking brown chapati in moderation, as long as you're using the most clear seed oil. Well, well. <laughs> eh? Simply go out to the supermarket and see the most clear. Now, as you go to the, the supermarket, you're looking for the most clear and the one that has an offer so that you get more for less. Cheap is expensive. So once you have that in your mind, that becomes easier for you. You fix the gut, you fix the gut wall, the integrity of the gut wall is fixed. Now you can enjoy your eggs without blaming eggs for allergies. Now you can enjoy your protein because the stomach acid is now being concentrated. Now you can tear down the larger molecules of protein to release amino acids or the polypeptides that can be chopped off by the pancreatic uh, proteases. And now you remain with amino acids, you absorb them. When you absorb them, these amino acids will be used to form different things. Muscle protein, they'll be used to form uh, neurotransmitters, hormones, and they'll be used and stored as energy also. But imagine this, you have depression and you go and take an antidepressant that actually messes up your stomach goal, that actually delays gastric emptying, therefore bloating and constipation. That destroys the acid environment, so you cannot even digest protein anymore. And simply, instead of you just going to take meat that will give you amino acids, that will give you an amino acid called tryptophan, that will make serotonin, which is a mood hormone, eh? that will just elate your mood and you get out of depression. And then, get out of the depressed, start creating things. Create things. Nobody's coming to save you from depression. No work. No amount of work, even if we walk 30 kilometers for you, we're actually making you more depressed. You're wondering, why? How, how did these people manage to walk 30 kilometers? And I'm here in a corner, seated in a corner, pitting myself. I want to kill myself. And then we give you an antidepressant that actually gives you suicidal thoughts. Now, you confirm your thoughts. You just... <laughs> yeah, you just... <laughs> instead of you just eating red meat and the eggs to get amino acids, some of these things, are, you can easily fix them. And when you put it in this language, this medical language, inflammatory bowel disease, you're wondering, hey, that, that's a big name, Daktari. That must be a very big disease. It is not. It is not. You think, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine I have a syndrome. I've been told I have inflammatory bowel syndrome. What is that syndrome, Daktari? What is this big disease that I cannot handle on my own? Like, I need you. What is it? And then I need you to just give me drugs. Why don't you give me some different solutions? And that's why we're making sense. Because sometimes you, you, you wonder, why is this doctor not talking about drugs? I do talk about drugs. I've talked about side effects of drugs, right? I've talked about conditions where we can administer drugs. I've talked about you taking drugs temporarily as you fix the kitchen. So I'm not against, I'm not against the drugs, no. I actually support drugs, but we have to take drugs when necessary and when totally needed totally need, when you have sepsis of course you have to go and take medication antibiotics you have to go and fix it if it's a fistula we have to fix it so we have to fix the problem but if you concentrate on fixing the symptoms ah we are messing it up like as we fix the fistula of course let's fix the dad that actually caused the fistula let's fix the microorganisms in the gut Let's fix the drugs that you're taking. How many are there on your prescription? Reduce them. Are there steroids? Have you taken them for the longest period of time? Reduce them. Start tapering them down. Please comment about uh, on steroids that I use to manage eczema on scalp. I'm telling you that this for free. Anything you see on your skin is a symptom of a messed up gut. There is a direct relationship between your gut and your brain and your gut and your skin. So whatever you're seeing on that skin is a symptom of a messed up gut. Fix the gut. You will not need drugs to fix the scalp. You fixing this. You fixing this. Is you fixing the symptom. This is a symptom of here. Why don't you concentrate here? Steroids are going to mess up the gut even more. So therefore, they will mask the symptoms of the skin now. And then after a month or two, they are back. And then, do you know that steroids are actually immune suppressants? They suppress your immunity. Once they do that, you get infections. More problems, right? Uh, a quick question. Mursik is good for healthy gut? It is. But Mursik, they used to just take Mursik and put in a gut without boiling so that they don't destroy the bacteria, they don't destroy the protein structure and the fat structure. Nowadays, you boil it because you're afraid of brucella. You're not afraid of brucellosis. You have messed up your gut so the gut cannot protect you. The problem is you. The problem is not the brucella. You cannot live without bacteria. They will be there. They have been there. You found them there. They're not going anywhere. 
So don't even be fooled that ciprofloxacin or doxycycline is coming to kill bacteria if it was to kill them. These drugs were identified in the 1940s. Imagine the penicillins, 1929, and up to now, we still treat the same, same bacteria. <laughs> are you seeing the sense? Or are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like, if we were totally to destroy the, gut, the, the microorganisms that cause us diseases, at this moment in time, we will not have any microorganism. With the advanced technology, we will not have any microorganism. But we focus on killing microorganisms that multiply every time, they become resistant every time, they are there, we found them there, they will always be there. So what, who, who told you you will kill them? That's why you get typhoid. Now you kill the bacteria using Cipro and then you come back again. There's another problem. There's another Cipro you have to take. So you keep on taking this. You only go higher from Cipro to Amoxiclav. From Amoxiclav to the original ones. You keep on going up, but the bacteria is not going anywhere because they are here to stay anyway. I mean, you're very tiny. They are in your gut. <laughs> so why are you struggling to kill them simply fix your gut microorganisms once you fix your gut microorganisms you will not, you'll not be crying of uh, typhoid, cholera and there's a cholera vaccine did you know that people are given that cholera vaccine I just was wondering why, why are we giving people cholera vaccine why don't we just fix their hygiene, why don't we fix uh, their sanitation, we are there giving them vaccines, imagine somebody giving you a vaccine for cholera like sometimes I even wonder what is my government doing and they make a whole campaign of these things. A whole campaign. And they feed people with these vaccines. Like, instantly. Right now, there's a vaccine that is being fed to children in, in primary schools. Please, if you're a parent, be very cautious. The government does not care. So imagine loading people with cholera vaccines. You are telling me that you're giving me cholera vaccines so that you prevent me from getting cholera. But you've not fixed my sanitation. You're using the shortcut. I mean, you are my mentor, member of parliament. Why don't you do something about it? You are my MCA. And the chills are being used to just shout in the villages, oh, cholera vaccine is going to protect you from getting cholera. They have zero information about it. And public health officers. And they load people with vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. And then they will sit back when the symptoms are coming, the problems are coming, side effects. They will just sit back. Nobody talks about anything. Public health officers are just there with their port bellies. So Murusik was good, and it's still good, as long as you... Actually, you can add in uh, activated charcoal. To remove the toxins. So yes, you can use mursik, but do not boil it. Simply ferment it without boiling. And then drink it without adding sugar. Fix the gut flora. Probiotic. I have done a bit of research on peanuts and found out it's more of protein with healthy fats and it's good for the gut. Can you confirm that it's not good for the gut, it's good for the body. So peanuts, you can eat all types of nuts as long as they are roasted and they only have salt. Nuts are good, they come with minerals. If you're here when you're talking about uh, minerals, ah, you'll know. Nuts are just good, they're perfect. My friend, when you sit in that birthday to enjoy that cake, cake is a combination of wheat plus sugar plus milk <laughs> plus margarine, a cake. One of the worst combinations. <laughs> I say, oh, you know me, I love, uh, what is it? Uh, Black Forest, ladies. When I was in campus, where? Ladies ate our money through Black Forest. <laughs> you know me and Black Forest. Eh? I, I love Black Forest. Eh? Things men do to just earn <laughs> the organ. Ah. That is Pia Jimla to test up one. <laughs> yeah? Can't even Black Forest or Red Velvet. Hey, hey. Sometimes it's melting already because it's so hot. <laughs> it's melting, but you want to reach before it melts. Hey. <laughs> Someday we'll put out a live to just talk and just, just have fun and see, <laughs> see the things that you guys have gone through. Hey! Eh? Because it's now red velvet, you will get the red organ. Wow! <laughs> just take a cake from this birthday to the other. Ah! <laughs> that time you've lied. You've lied to, to your father. Who, <laughs> for those of you who have fathers who are the clutch, like me, <laughs> you lied to the archbishop. Hey, you know, I need this money for a project. Archbishop is like, hey, okay, let me just see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, they are buying red velvet. You destroy the gut of this lady. And this lady is now complaining, oh, you know, I have gastritis. Because again, in campus, chapodondo, hmm? beans and, and, and chapati, gideri. 
Hey, this these were the foods, but no. And and smocha and whatever. That chapati that you just fold in uh, smokies or chapati with some egg plus some coffee in plastic containers. Hey, those things would have grown in my stomach. Right now, I'd be plucking chapatis on my head from a tree that just grew. <laughs> I ate too much chapatis. Yeah. So, yeah, please. Uh, as you take that red velvet to earn the organ, well done. But that is the most crazy combination of bad foods. Okay, good. Uh -huh. So yeah, let me move straight to the complications before I talk about the treatment. Okay, now listen. From the from the causes that we just talked about, and from the from how it affects the gut wall, how IBD, both the Crohn's and the ulcerative colitis, how they affect the gut wall. You already have a rough idea of the complications. So be kind enough to just type one complications, one complication. Sorry, that is coming in your head right now. You don't need me to tell you these things. This is how I empower you to become just a doctor. Thinking. I empower you to think. Not to rely on me spoon feeding you. Simply type, what do you think is one of the complications of an inflamed gut? IBD. Just one complication. I'll read them. Indigestion. Perfect. Perforation. Perfect. Colon cancer. Perfect. Imagine. So, all of you are doctors without even me making this happen. The only thing I do is I activate that gene. <laughs> of you becoming a doctor. GE, perfect. Bloating, perfect. Sepsis, malabsorption, ah, yeah, yeah. skin conditions, hey, hey. gastroparesis, hormonal imbalance. Look at this. Ah, I think I can call it a night. Ah, flatulence, bloating, diabetes. Hey, I have to go. <laughs> I call it a night. I think now we have doctors already here. You can graduate. We can go. The only thing I'll do is I'll bring the oath. Yeah, so, that, so that I remind you. I'll be, constipation. IBS. That is perfect because IBD causes IBS. All those symptoms that you're getting are actually the IBS now. Perfect answer. Ulcers. Ah, yeah, yeah. Protein allergies are amazing. Look at that. So therefore, we are doctors. We just don't know, right? We are doctors, but we just don't know. Reflux disease. And ulcers of the esophagus, they are there. Fistula, Ooh, how do we forget that? Anemia. Ah, we are good to go. Now, hey, so listen to this. You will just confirm what you just typed. Boil obstruction. Why? Because we are having inflammation, so it's swelling. Now we are narrowing. We call, see, we call them the strictures. We are narrowing the gut problems. Fistula. Malabsorption. Colon cancer. And colon cancer actually comes in as a result of the ulcerative colitis. Remember that? Ulcerative colitis. Depression is the Ochola. Thank you for that. Because a messed up gut brings you depression. And then now you go and fix depression using medication. And you've forgotten you can fix the gut. Amazing. Arthritis is there. On the stress, let me, let me make this CJ. Listen to this. Stress is actually one of the causes of the problem. And then stress will come in after getting the problem. So this one is a double sword. One, stress makes sure that you have high levels of cortisol. Cortisol is a steroid. You destroy the gut wall. You expose it to the acid. Now problems of inflammation. And then number two, you will now end up having chronic stress. So stress actually feeds its own appetite. As you get stress there, you're actually destroying the gut wall. And then now you have chronic stress, which is going to give you arthritis and all that. So please, Ease up on stress levels in your system. You don't need it. You're not stressed. You're being taught to be stressed. You're unable to produce. You're unable to do something. Just walk up and do something. Just do a walk. Or if you're stressed, go to the, go to the gym and lift the bar. But look at you saying that I'm stressed and then heading to the bar to drink two for the road. And then blaming it on other people. Oh, my wife is stressing me. No human being can stress you because you have control over your own emotions. So therefore, your woman cannot stress you. Your man cannot stress you. It is you who has stress from within you. just looking for a place to just lash it. You have anger, actually. And you're looking for everything that you can actually lash that anger to. So you don't have an identity. So go fix the identity by forgiving those who actually put or input a false identity in you. We've talked about identities before, right? Yeah, good. So yes, a leaky gut is there. When you have a leaky gut, of course, all issues come in. Allergies, depression, anemia, hey. <laughs> autoimmune coming in. 
Uh -huh. And then we have infections, which is sepsis. Gut microorganisms getting access to the bloodstream. Now you have an infection. Look at you being a doctor right now. And then you're telling me, oh, oh, I am not a doctor. You are a doctor. You are just afraid of how people will receive you when you start preaching this information. You are just afraid. And fear is the nature of evil, which means you've harbored evil inside you. Diarrhea is there, yes, because you're destroying gut microorganisms. You're punished with diarrhea. And that diarrhea either has blood, fresh blood, which is uh, ulcerative colitis, or it has dark blood, which now tells you that is Crohn's disease. All of you are becoming doctors, just like that. Be proud of it, okay? Because your grandfather did not get a degree to become a doctor. Your grandfather understood common sense and he knew nature speaks volume. He knew common sense over intellect. But most of us are filled with intellect, which comes with an ego. Oh, you know, I'm a doctor. Look at medical students, how they behave in campuses. You will think they are super gods. But look at them still going to prescribe the same drug they have learned or they are taught for themselves. Look at them going to do those projects, present those projects. They cannot even stand in front of people to just give a speech or talk about a project they have done themselves because they copied. And now they have the anxiety and palpitations. I remember when we were doing the project presentation when I was in my undergraduate, people were taking propranolol, a drug that is supposed to be used for thyroid problems and also uh, for hypertension. It's a beta blocker. People are taking that drug to ease up on palpitation so that they can actually stand in front of people to say something. Imagine that. And these are people who are in the fifth year. <laughs> they are almost getting out of the system because they've now been conditioned successfully. Now they understand drugs here and there. Now they are taking propranolol to ease up on anxiety because they are afraid to present their own projects. Hi. <laughs> So anemia is also part of the complications. Hmm? Malabsorption and malnutrition. Now you have the deficiency of, this, of, of these vitamins. Specifically vitamin A, D, E and K. The fat soluble vitamins. And of course uh, vitamin B6 uh, and 12 that need intrinsic factor to absorb. And of course you cannot absorb vitamin C. Therefore iron deficiency is coming in. Of course you cannot absorb calcium. Therefore weak bones are coming in. Look at that. So do you think medicine is that complicated, is it? Do you think nutrition is so difficult? The only issue is, when you start giving these drugs very complicated names, and they are very difficult to pronounce, and when we'll be, we'll be talking about drugs, you'll see. When I'll talk about drugs, you'll see the complicated names, and you'll start thinking, I, may, maybe, maybe, maybe I should just quit medicine. <laughs> yeah? Fermented uji without sugar is advisable to take? Yes, it is. Why? Because it's fermented, therefore the microorganisms feed on the sugar and then they give you something else, the lactic acid. But however, look at it this way. I want you to know you have different goals. So if you have hypertension, diabetes and chronic conditions, why would you even take uh, the cup? The cup? Do not. All the same. So he, those are the complications. The one that you just mentioned and it's amazing. Uh, cotrimoxazole taken as present, preventive or opportunistic infections, can it cause harm? Uh, than advantage yes why because but you see by the time you're taking it as an optimist opportunistic infection prevention it means your uh, your immunity is compromised already okay so that means you have to fix the immunity by fasting eating healthy exercise the sun sleep and all that so that you can actually avoid the use of uh, uh, cotrimoxazole because again it is insoluble so therefore it can cause you kidney problems again it's an antibiotic that comes with different side effects you know of the allergies right the Stephen Johnson syndrome, you know that. So yes, you can actually avoid the use of this medication because your problem is not the use of the medication of the bacteria. Your problem is a compromised immunity. And how do you boost immunity? I already mentioned it. So when you fix that, you don't need to use any drug for opportunistic infection. They are opportunistic because you fail to fix the immunity and then they take advantage of that. Doc, how is uh, hair loss related to gut? Vitamin B7 deficiency, gut problems.